Hi, it's Brickzar, and we're excited to finally be able to review the Back to the Future DeLorean set from Cousseau. It's set 21103, uh, Cousseau number four. And, you know, we've already seen some reviews that people have posted on YouTube, and we're excited to be able to give our perspective on this very important and special set. Could become our favorite set of all time. So we're going to look at this, going to tell you what we think about it, and hopefully you will like this review. Now, let's open the box. Now, this is uh, one we've been eagerly waiting, and let's get it out. Awesome. Just awesome. Let's look at the details. Just waiting so much for this DeLorean. A totally awesome build, and we hope you like this review. Okay, just kidding, that's not the actual DeLorean, that's a little mini scale DeLorean. So we'll get that one out of the way. Here's the DeLorean. So, we're going to be going into detail over this. This is the main model that you build, the first one that you can build, and you can uh, modify it very easily into the other models from Back to the Future 2 and Back to the Future 3. So this is basically the Back to the Future, the first movie version. So if it's going to be cool, we're going to look at it in more detail. Look at your printed plates that it's got. It's uh, pretty awesome. So there's one piece that they left off of this one I'll mention later uh, that I thought would have been a good, easy detail to add. but. Uh, We'll get to that in a moment. All right, first we'll look at our Marty McFly. This is played by Michael J. Fox, whom we loved in Family Ties. But anyway, this was um, his first really big movie. He was uh, in several other movies, but this was, of course, a blockbuster and still massively popular. And his character, Marty McFly, he went back in time and he was wearing this outfit here with the sleeveless sleeveless vest and everybody thought he was wearing a life preserver so that's what he's got on his blue jeans I like that that color that they use for his legs it's not a common color that you see and then you see the back of his life preserver I mean his vest so very cool and there's his normal face and here is Marty McFly's uh oh face so got two faces on the same head you just flip it around and you can have the different expressions so uh, good playability there with the minifigure and Marty also comes with a purple skateboard which is pretty cool I'm not sure if this can convert to a hoverboard it's got little clips on the bottom uh, he needs a hoverboard for the other episodes but um, he also rode the wooden um, homemade skateboard when he went back to the 50s but they don't include that in this set all right here's our Doc Emmett Brown played by Christopher Lloyd best known for his work in taxi uh, and also best known for being like um, Jeff Goldblum and seeming to play seemingly playing the same character in every movie uh, that he's in but anyway he's your eccentric doctor he's got his white hair just a neat little hairpiece. He's got his radioactive protective vest because they're working with plutonium. And there's his normal happy smiling face that he's got. He's got a lot of details on his on his outfit there. He's got his little badges to uh, detect the, uh, the radiation and things like that. You can see the part of his clothing underneath the torso. So that's pretty cool. Now let's show you the other face. All right, here's his uh, O face, and this is, uh, since this is obviously the outfit he wore in the first Back to the Future, this is his, uh oh, it's the Libyans face, who the Libyans were the ones that he swindled out of their plutonium to give the power for his uh, DeLorean. So uh, if he had an outfit that would match the 50s Doc Brown, it would be the, uh oh, 1.21 gigawatts. To which I have to say, what on earth is a gigawatt? 
gigawatt. They spell it J-I-G-O-W-A-T-T. I think that's something that, what well, is something, it is a misspelling um, of gigawatt. I think Christopher Lloyd playing Doc Brown was supposed to say gigawatt, which is 1 billion watts, so 1.21 gigawatts would be 1.21 billion watts, which is an extremely massive amount of power. But uh, he said gigawatt, and they spelled it J-I-G-O-W-A-T-T, -T, and that's the way it's spelled in the manual. And that's a made-up number, so or a made-up well, word. Not a number, it's a word. So, um, yeah, it's just a little history there. That's not uh, an actual unit of power. So anyway, um, sorry to get off into basic physics there. It's a gigawatt, Doc Brown. Gigawatt, not g -g gigawatt. But anyway, nobody really cares. It's just, uh-oh, that's a lot of power to make this car move. All right, before I show you the car, we're going to look at the box. A very nice box. It is much like the Architecture Series boxes or the Lego Special Edition Employee Only Sets boxes. Very nice black in there and we'll look at the back of it where it shows you the three models that you can build which is cool and I like how they even did this printing here because in the 80s we did not have the label makers like you have today they used those um, labels where you punched it and it put an impression on the tape and that's what this is that's what Doc Brown used in the 80s and so that's what they did with this uh, customize your mo model to match one of the three movies so we're going to look at all three of those when we build them and it shows you here the printed pieces which are a little difficult to see on it when it's built and there's the uh, control panel there's the futuristic license plate here's the license plate as you see from the end of back to the future the first one and there's your flux capacitor uh, which we'll look at that in more detail in a minute so it's a very cool box, and the instruction manual is just like a book. So even though this set retails for $35, I think it's well worth it, uh, being that you get 400 pieces, 401 pieces, you get a brick separator, and you get a nice box and a very nice manual. It's an excellent manual. And it's got details about the movie, Michael J. Fox's role in the movie, some history about the movie, the history about the time machine and also very important the information about Michael J. Fox's foundation for Parkinson's research which we know that's what he's been suffering from for many years. I've known some of our friends personally that suffered from that disease and it's a very terrible thing. But anyway, um, got some information here on the DeLorean and the flux capacitor, the carbon oxygen tank, the liquid oxygen chambers that can explain some of the different modifications that Doc Brown made on the DeLorean. We saw a DeLorean that a guy brought to a car show. It wasn't actually one from the movie, but it's one that he kind of rigged up to look like it. It's pretty cool to see an actual DeLorean. But, um, and then on the back, it goes into the Cousseau designers. Uh, we have our uh, Tagami and Sakuritsu, I can't say his name, but Masashi Tagami, he was the one that was the main one uh, coming up with this uh, creation that uh, Lego later modified, so it doesn't look exactly like his Cousseau creation, but uh, he teamed up with a guy that knew how, that's the Sakuritsu, who knew how to make custom minifigures, and then here's the dude from Lego that modified it, and his name is Steen Anderson, and he's the one that uh, from Lego that made it. He tried to do it as much as he could, similar to um, the Cousseau version, but um, it's a little different. He used the said he used this new element, a relatively new Technic element, part 87082. 87082. It's a double bush. It has two pins on the end of it to make the wheels um, do the hover type. So that's uh, the manual. It's got the parts list. Yet another brick separator. 
I'm starting to wish they would make limited edition brick separators, special colors. I mentioned that in my review of the um, architecture series. I said, wish they if everything, everything's white in that, why didn't they put a uh, white brick separator? Why didn't they put like a gray brick separator or a uh, futuristic looking brick separator? But that would have been more production costs. So anyway, so that's the manual in the box. All right, we're going to look closer at the main model that you get. Look at all sides of it. Look at the back. And this version we put the out of time tag on it. There's all the more details. Here's the bottom. The bottom's relatively plain. And we'll open it up here. Oops. We can see a little bit, bit better on the inside. There's our flux capacitor in the back. It says shield eyes from light. Doc Brown didn't know how to spell shield, or actually Lego didn't know how to spell shield. They spelled it S-H-E-I-L-D, but who can ever remember with the English language? Is it I before E or E before I? I before E, except and receive. I can't ever remember, so we, we'll give them a pass on that. They spelled shield wrong on the that, that piece there. Can't see all of it in here. I'll have to, um, there you go. There's the top of it, the bottom of it. Now we'll look at the other side and see the controls. Very cool. I like the LED display type that like dark brown had. When I was into electronics as a young person, that's what we, we had. And the problem with LEDs of that type is they um, required a relatively large amount of power for such a small device. I mean, it's not massive like light bulbs, but, or, but the modern LEDs uh, have far less drain, but those LEDs would drain your batteries in our little uh, models and things that I made with electronics but um, it's got another little control a typical dial there another dial there and one minifigure will fit in the DeLorean not two you can only put one in there so that's the main model okay I said I wanted to do this review a little differently than perhaps some others that you've seen so what we're going to do is we're going to compare it to a die-cast version of the DeLorean and this first we'll compare the, the first Back to the Future version. And this is our die cast version. It opens. You have the side opening as they both do. And see the hoses run under the door. Uh, the die cast version does have two seats. And the it has a little more details. But um, we'll look at the front. Now you see the front, we have the DMC on the front of it. Uh, don't have that on the front of the Lego version. I'm not sure if they couldn't get the permission from uh, DeLorean to make that. Um, but they don't have the DMC on the front of it. I have a um, another version here. This is an actual uh, die-cast Hot Wheels DeLorean, and I'm not going to take it out of my package, but it has the DMC on the front. Uh, that's the Hot Wheels version, and then we also have the Hot Wheels Time Machine DeLorean. It has DMC on the front of it. The Back to the Future Time Machine. Okay, and then I'll just look at the other sides of it, compare them. They do have the yellow, they, we used the, there's a one by one plate there, and then here's you see the yellow highlights there. So, overall, um, not bad. It's harder to uh, obviously make it on a small scale like this out of Lego uh, as compared to die cast where you're just molding metal. But you see, you got the piece on the top, very good, you know, they did really good, and then these parts in the back. 
there's no license plate on the my diecast version. But the light, even the color of the lights, they did, they got it, they got it right. So that's pretty cool. Now the diecast version, there's the bottom. Obviously, they weren't too concerned about the bottom of the Lego version. And then the wheels. Now they, I thought they might have could have made a new molding for the wheel to kind of match the DeLorean wheels, um, but they just used kind of generic Lego wheels, which is okay. Um, and then the other thing, this is one of the things I mentioned earlier about something was left off. I think they should have made an attachment for the first movie where you could ha attach the um, the hook that Doc modified to catch the lightning strike on the DeLorean. They could have just used like an antenna piece or a uh, a long bar with a hook on the end of it just to attach to it. But they, I did not see that in the instructions. So that would have been ni a nice detail to add that I don't think would have cost too much. But uh, it's just a minor thing. So there's the comparison of the first movie version of the DeLorean to a die-cast model of the first movie DeLorean. All right, now we're going to compare it to somebody's mock. Uh, this is made by Ichabon Toys. I, I bought the um, instructions for this a long time ago on eBay. This is one of his original versions. And he's got a few more details. There's some flimsy things about it. It doesn't have a flux capacitor. The front looks similar. I like the sloped uh, hood a little better. And I like the wheels that he used a little better. Um, and this was all made from basic Lego parts. Um, I like using the cheese slopes on the back uh, a little better. And this is already has the Mr. Fusion on it, which is not until the end of the movie. So there's a brief comparison to the Cousseau version of the DeLorean to someone's custom version of the DeLorean, a die-cast version, and also our Hot Wheels versions. So now let's get on to the other movie models of the DeLorean. Alright, now we're going to do the conversion from Back to Future 1 to the Back to the Future 2 uh, version of the DeLorean. And I have a confession to make. I didn't actually build this. Uh, I had my assistant build it. Actually, he built it because I was asleep when this thing came in the mail. We got This is the one we got from Amazon. So, uh, when I was doing the conversion, uh, you need to make... Um, uh, some parts to convert it to if the third Back to the Future and one for the second and I noticed there were some parts missing so what you're seeing now on camera looks different than what we just saw. Uh, see if you can notice the difference. Um, anyway, so I got it hopefully correctly built. I didn't look at all the interiors but it should be correctly built. Now I'm going to move the these out of the way that's the first version so now we need to convert it to the second version which would be a hovercraft and we already did that we have the clear trans clear slope and brick that goes on underneath to hold it up the wheels they just fold up real easily with this special technic pin here part 87 what did I say that was part 87082 it has a pin on each side and holder so you just flip it over like that that's the regular way and then this way so put this back on so that's one conversion you make and let me bring over the back to the future 2 model now the the die cast when we see mr. fusion and that's the main difference um, he added Mr. Fusion. So we have a Mr. Fusion that you build and it is very easy to attach. You simply put it over the yellow piece like that and you got your Mr. Fusion. So now we've converted it except for one more detail. We have our license plate and we got to take our episode one or movie number one license plate off and put on our modern license plate which is the barcode and so we got two years for them to start making those <laughs> I don't think we're going to see that so 
so that's what the back looks like. Now let's look at my my model here. It still says out of time. So uh, my diecast model um, didn't have it right, I suppose. So other than that, uh -oh, one of the hoses came off. It's kind of flimsily built. You notice that, like with the the windshield, the invisible the windshield that's not there. It's just this brick build here, so it's not really that cool. But, uh, and my diecast model, they do not the wheels do not move. So that's one advantage Lego has over the diecast. Diecast can put more details. The Lego has more playability. You know, I've neglected to put Marty ever in this thing, so let's do that. Should have done that when we looked at the first one. But it's the same car, you're just adding some details to the outside of the car. Hey, we got Marty in there, ready to go to 88 miles an hour. Close those back down on them as goal, goal, what they call as goal wing doors. I don't know. I can see goal. So that's the Back to the Future 2 version. Okay, so now we're going to convert it to the Back to the Future 3, and I'll pull out the die cast version. This is what the Back to the Future 3 looks like. You got different wheels because they had to get 50s style tires. And now I'm really getting confused. Yeah, that's right. And then he had this device on the front of it. So, let's see what we do. We add this, which is a little piece you build with the extra parts you had left over after building the first one. And you take off, I believe, this tile. And then that snaps right. Yeah, that's what you do. And it snaps right on. And you're converted as far as that part goes and then the only thing left to do is change out the wheels which I'll do off camera. Okay now we've converted it to the Back to the Future 3. This is where they recondition it and Marty takes it back to the 1800s and this is I mean overall I'm happy with the set. I mean they did good with what they had to work with I guess but one thing I don't like about this, I mean, I like the attachment here, um, but I don't like the wheels. I wish they had made them some way where you could have the white walls and the chrome. I mean, if you look at that, that looks really nice on the die-cast version. And I mean, when I saw the movie, I remember that's the thing that stood out to me was the wheels. I could focus, yeah. I mean, just that, that white and red contrast with the black and then the chrome just really stood out and then when you look at the lego version it's just kind of blah so that's a little bit of a disappointment but uh not not too bad but um just wanted to mention that so there you have it the back to the future 3 version and it's interesting all the movies they kind of mirror each other you usually had three uh people that were associated with the Biff character or the Biff ancestor <laughs> but um, anyway um, and then Marty and him be, didn't like it when people called him chicken and I will say now about somebody who is a chicken ah, I changed my mind I'm not gonna do that um, I just saw a video somebody posted where they were complaining because Lego had sold out of the Back to the Flu Future DeLorean on August 1st, but actually they're not sold out. Uh, it may have been temporarily back ordered at a time, but it just, it kind of annoys me uh, that the person did that when they, they're, 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 they're quick to post rants, but if somebody has a counter to it, they're chicken to respond, and they were chicken of my response, so they blocked me, so that's okay. Uh, I don't need to watch their channel anyway. It's just a bunch of hot air, and they even dissed the Brick Show, which really perturbed me as well because those two guys have worked very hard to get where they were. They, she dissed them by saying that, you know, oh, some people got it early. Well, 
you know, big deal. They're going to make plenty of these. So that leads to uh, my investment part of this. Uh, I think Lego will make as many of these as they need to make. So I don't think as far as something that's going to go way up in value, uh, I think there will always be a demand for it though, and as more children are born that like Back to the Future, uh, there will be a demand and they will eventually stop producing them. So yes, it will, I think, go up in value, but it's not going to have that astronomical jump that some people may hope for. Uh, we bought this one. I have two more coming because I have a household of four. <laughs> so uh, we each want to have ours. So I'm not going to, this is not one that I will stockpile. If you watch my haul videos, I do buy tons of sets, but I usually buy things that are on clearance in mass quantities because they're instantly worth more. Uh, you know, for this thing to double in price, that means it would be worth $70 US. Uh, it may take a while. Uh, who knows? They, they may stop producing them. They may only produce them this year, but I think, I really think Lego will make as many of them as they need to make. So uh, buy this because you like it. Maybe set one aside if you want, but uh, it's not, I don't think it's one of those that you, you're going to just, it's going to be a gold mine for you. Uh, but it is a good set. We do like it. 1.21 gigawatts. It's a really good set. So that's my review of the Back to the Future DeLorean and all three of its versions. And my little mini rant. Hope I didn't offend anybody with that. But um, yeah, uh, you can read into it if you want to. So this is a good set. I highly recommend it. Don't miss out on your chance to get it. Uh, just check the website and it's still available. You can get it on Amazon. Um, and if they sell out or they get on back order, I'm sure they're gonna make more. So get your Back to the Future DeLorean. Thanks for watching this video of Brickzar. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, we love Lego. We support the Lego group and the products they make and have been happily collecting Lego for 40 years in this household and I have children now that love them and love the Lego and even love the Back to the Future movie. So good job with this product. Really happy with it. Even though there are some things I would have liked to have seen differently, very good job. So leave your comments below and if you have not already subscribed, please do so and I appreciate those that are and that give meaningful comments and we'll catch you in the next video this is joseph i'm brick czar I'm going to make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs>